everyone, and thank you for joining me for another empowerment message. Today, we have a few scriptures that we're going to go through, so I won't give one specific scripture, but what we're talking about today is the dragonfly. This morning, um, I was sitting there looking out the window, and the dragonfly that was shown um, in the opening was outside of our RV window all morning, I mean for hours, and he would just fly up and then go right back to the same branch and stayed there. And I kept looking at it, and I was just fascinated by the way it was flying, and I said, let me just start researching a little bit. I had not paid much attention to, to dragonflies throughout my life, but we spent the uh, winter in Florida, and I started seeing more and more dragonflies, and they were becoming more and more fascinating to me. Um, but I hadn't taken the time to actually research them until this morning when I saw this little dragonfly outside of the window for so long. Um, I have a way of connecting um, to nature in different ways. Not a fanatic or anything like that, but there's some things that I just like in nature. Until these dragonflies, uh, before there was the chipping sparrow. And it took me a while to find out what uh, the type of uh, sparrow that it was that I was really loving for so many years. It started when I was just a teenager, so that's been some decades now um, that have passed. And I was one of those kind of teenagers that had their goals written out. And at some points I had them on my bathroom mirror so that I could see them every single morning, just ready to, to graduate from high school and get ready to meet some of those goals. I meet all the goals, but obviously a step-by-step -step process. And so I would just kind of pay attention to different things. And one time, I want to say I was in 11th grade, because I think I was driving by then. I saw one of these little birds. I didn't know what it was, but it just amused me how it would just hop around, hop around. And I kept seeing more and more of them, but they seemed like they were just hopping around, not really doing much. But then you look up and all of a sudden there's a whole nest. And it's like, when in the world did they do that? Because it just looked like it was just hopping around idly doing nothing. Well, I related to that bird because it seemed like I was just this little lady or little girl at that point. Hopping around, hopping around to and fro. Didn't look like I may have been accomplishing much, but I was. I ended up graduating from high school early. I was taking extra crap classes. I ended up graduating with more classes or more credits than I needed, even though... Um, I graduated early. I had more credits than was required by the school that I attended. Um, besides that, I had three jobs at one point um, one summer. I always had a job from the time I was 14. Um, had extracurricular activities, multiple extracurricular activities and groups that I was in at school. Um, volunteerism with Mothers Against Drunk Driving and Students Against Drunk Driving. Um, so there was a lot that I was accomplishing. And I was ready, like that little sparrow, to start accomplishing more and more goals. So that was the part of nature or, or um, animal that I really related to until I kept seeing this dragonfly and the dragonflies that I was seeing in Florida. So when I saw that little dragonfly outside the window for so long, like I said, I started researching and what I found was fascinating to me. I started looking at the life cycle of a dragonfly first and found that it starts as an egg in water when they hatch and they're called nymphs. As nymphs, they can stay in the water up to five years. Um, it's usually between two and a half and five years. And five is really my favorite number because five in the word of God is the number of grace. So that stood out at me that stood out to me that they stayed in five years. After that, when it's time for the nymph to become an actual dragonfly, it crawls out of the water and then it rests on a reed or on a stick. And once the air touches its skin, it then begins to breathe. It takes its first breath. So we're like those nymphs. It just um, automatically caught my attention. We're like those nymphs in water. Genesis 1 and 2 tells us that at one time, darkness was upon the face of the, of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So when we're unsaved, we're in a dark, unsteady place, just like that, that water, the face of the deep. Whether we know it or not, we're in a dark, unsteady place, but the Holy Spirit is still moving around us. It's still moving around us, or he's still moving around us. At some point when we say yes, we're out of that dark place and we go to a place of a certain kind of rest. Then remember after that, 
the light hits the dragonfly and then it breathes. Well, that immediately took me to John 8 and 12, where it says, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So like the dragonfly, when the light hits us, the light, that light is Christ. When the light hits us, then we can breathe. We're living beings before, just like the nymph. But listen to this. If we go to Genesis 127, it says, So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. But later, in Genesis 2.5, God said there was no man to till the ground. Then, two verses later, in 2.7, he formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into him and became a living soul. That's the Ruach breath of life. So he was a living being, but he became a living soul. Amen? So we're living beings at birth, but when God breathes into us his pneuma, his Ruach breath of life, when he breathes that into us, when we're saved or when the light shines on us, we take our first breath. Amen? We take our first breath. And we're then alive. Amen. Before that, we're just idle creatures as unproductive as the dragonfly sitting on a stick, passing time. Once that dragonfly breathes, its wings begin to unfurl. They start to roll out and they open up to the wind. It takes some time for them to open and then for the dragonfly to be able to take flight. So it takes time, but then when it does, something amazing happens. The dragonfly can move very swiftly, up to 60 miles per hour. Now, the dragonfly is not that big, and to be able to move 60 miles per hour is amazing. But their method of flying is not the same as any other flying creature. Other creatures that fly, fly back and forth, and that stands to reason. The chipping sparrow that I like so much, it flies back and forth. And to the natural eye, we can see it going back and forth. But the dragonfly goes up and down. And to the natural eye, it seems that it's standing still. It doesn't seem like it's moving at all. Again, like that chipping sparrow I talked about that didn't seem like it was getting anything done, wasn't accomplishing much at all. But before you know it, it's got a whole nest or whatever other little birdie task that they need to accomplish. So this dragonfly moving up and down appears that it's not moving not going anywhere when in reality it's moving up to 60 miles per hour moving faster than most of all of its counterparts then besides that the dragonfly can carry up to 15 times its own weight the dragonfly its makeup its ability its design it defies reason it defies nature but when we're saved and we're operating in faith we too defy reason. We defy nature itself. Amen? That dragonfly, if you, if you heard me just say, it can carry up to 15 times its own weight. We carry a lot. We bear a lot of burden sometimes, but the Lord says that his burden is easy, right? That, that his yoke is easy, I'm sorry, and his burden is light. We can carry more than it seems like we should be able to carry. He knows just how much we can bear, amen? But it defies reason. We shock ourselves sometimes at the amount of the, of the things that we can carry and that we can hold on to, but let God take it away from us and work it all out, amen? When we're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit, what we do defies nature. It may seem to other people looking from the outside in, that we're not accomplishing much, but just like that dragonfly, we're moving a different way. We're moving uh, in a way that's, that's totally different to our perceived counterparts. Amen. So it looks like we may not be doing much sometimes, but we are letting God do what he wants to do with our lives. And when we do that, what we accomplish defies all reason. And it's because we walk in favor that we accomplish more than the natural eye can see. Because as is written in, in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are a peculiar people, the word tells us. Now, as many wonderful, desirable characteristics that the dragonfly has, there are always some things that may seem undesirable. 
when they breathe their first breath and begin to fly, their life then only lasts for a few weeks to a few months. The Bible tells us that one day is as a thousand years with the Lord. So our time too is quite short when you really look at it. We have people that have passed on and gone to glory and they may not have been old and aged as, as we think someone is supposed to be when they move on to that, that next plane. And, and we say life is so short. Life is too short. Well, life's not too short if you're accomplishing the things that God has set forth for you to accomplish. If your life is full of purpose and you're walking in the path that God laid out for you, life's not too short. Amen. So just like that dragonfly, he accomplishes the things that he needs to accomplish in just those few weeks to a few months that he has of life after he takes that first breath. So we want to make sure that when we're saved, amen, when we say yes to the Lord, at that very moment, we give him our yes. Don't just say yes, but give him our yes. That's why the Lord says that we need to say with our mouth and believe in our heart because he knows our hearts, amen. He can read that. We can say anything to, to people with our mouths, right? I've had many people that have come in, in our church and, and they've given their life to the Lord and they say they want to live for the Lord. And then sometimes I don't even see them ever again. I tell so many people, when you say yes to the Lord, make sure you get into a Bible believing church and you tell that pastor that you want to be baptized and then you get busy. My dad always said you get busy in the church. He used to say that the reason that they call the seats in the church pews is because people sit there and do absolutely nothing and they start to just smell and they say pew. And so we want to make sure that we're not sitting there taking up space in a church. We want to get active. We want to get busy. And that way we'll begin to hear what the Lord is telling us that, that his purpose is for our lives. Amen. And then no matter how short our days may be here on earth, what God set forth for us to accomplish has been accomplished. Amen. We want to make the best of our time here. Ephesians 5, 15 and 17 reminds us to be very careful about how we live and not to live like those who are unwise, but to live like those who are wise. So what we should do is to make sure that we use the best of our time. All we need to do to ensure that is to completely surrender to God. Let go and let him have his way in our lives. Amen. That is all we have to do because he knows the plans that he has for us. He knew the plan that he had for us before we took our first breath, before the foundations of the earth. He knew the plans that he has for us. But all we need to do is trust him and seek him and then rest in him. And then our time here will definitely be fruitful. It'll be fulfilling. It'll be purposeful. One last thing I've got to tell you about the dragonfly is that the dragonfly has this exoskeleton. And so it has a harder shell on the outside. But when they start to take that first breath, amen, when they when the, the light hits them and they take that first breath, that exoskeleton sheds. And another one is formed and makes room for the new organs that they have in their bodies because they're all reformed or re, remade, regenerated. And they need more room for them because they're softer and fuller. When we say yes to the Lord, we know that we now have a heart of flesh. We have a soft heart, a fleshy heart, not the flesh like this, but a fleshy or soft heart. And that's replaced, um, that, that it replaced that hard heart that we used to have. And so we make room for it. The word of God talks about the old wine skins that you can't put new wine in an old wine skin because what'll happen? It'll just fall apart. So make room for God. Let him change your heart. Let him give you that new heart, that fleshy heart that makes you love people, love him more. Amen. Let him make room for the, the new wine that he wants to give you, the new things that he wants to give you. Just let go and let him do it. And I guarantee you, he will. You'll have a life that you never dreamed of if you just say yes to the Lord and then let go and live your life for him. 
Let him move you around and watch how your life becomes more amazing than you ever thought it could. I don't want to be long. I, I don't want to belabor the point, but I just wanted to, to share with you that amazing message God gave me today about that dragonfly. Amen. I hope to see more of them because now I am fascinated. It makes me just more fascinated with all the things that God has created. So if you pray with me, if you're unsaved, if you'd like to rededicate yourself, we'll now go into just a word of prayer. And we know that God is here with us. The Holy Spirit is here with us and he will hear you and move move in your life in a way that will absolutely defy nature. Amen. Defy reason. Because what? Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has in store for you. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, we come to you giving you thanks and praise and honor, Lord, for all the symbols, Lord Jesus, and reminders, Father God, you give us about your nature, Lord God, about how you are with us, Lord Jesus Christ, when we say yes to you. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord Jesus Christ, confessing, Father, that we are sinners, that we have sinned, Lord God, and that we have fallen, Heavenly Father, short of your grace, your mercy, and your love, Lord. But right now, we want you, Heavenly Father, to be in charge of our lives. We want you to be our Savior, Lord God. We want you to come into our hearts right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We believe, Lord God, that you were born of a virgin, that you suffered and died under Pontius Pilate, Lord God, that you were resurrected again on the third day, Lord Jesus, in fulfillment of the scriptures. We believe, Heavenly Father, that you are the Savior. We believe that you are the one that came and you are the one that is to come, Heavenly Father. You are the Messiah, Lord God, and we want to live our lives for you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this message and all things Things that you give us, all messages you give us, Lord God, whether it's in the church, Lord, whether it's in the rustling of the trees, Lord, whether it's in the, 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 the dragonfly or the sparrow, Lord Jesus Christ, you give us messages all around us, Lord Jesus, and you speak to us clearly, Father God. Let us know your voice, Heavenly Father, beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is your voice, Lord God, and teach us how to better live for you. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we thank you, praise you, worship you, and adore you. And we say amen, amen, and amen.